I'm a reporter with uh, Rebel Media. Hey, Rebel Media. Yes. What part of New York? What brought you up here? What's that? To take uh, just to, well, I wanted to see if there was any extra border patrol due to the fact that the COVID-19 thing, Trump said that he was going to have like an extra presence here. And, you know, just there's some uh, Canadian reporters on the other side couldn't get too close. And they also didn't notice that there was too much of a difference with the, the presence there. I don't want to, I'm not going to get you guys on tape. No. You know, matter of fact, you're going to turn it off right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is something people do. They just go home like everybody else. These central crowds, this is not even Oh, I see. Right. Because, because of the COVID thing? Yeah. But you, if it wasn't, this would be fine. No, it still would be fine. We don't like people just walk around here. They're abating and abating and abetting. Mm. People leave. People sometimes murder with a cat, right? Yeah. Kill somebody in New York City, skip in the camera, we never catch them. Mm. All right? You have a good day. You as well. Did you know that? According to that cop, someone commits murder in New York City and then skips into Canada through Roxham Road? <laughs> Judging by Justin Trudeau, they're all little lambs seeking refuge from the bad, bad world. You know, refugees from the United States. Well, that was Ryan Katsu Rivera, a reporter from New York who did a freelance project for us because had we sent a Canadian or rebel journalist down, well, he could have gotten into the States, but then there would have been a two-week quarantine when he came back. So Ryan did the job for us. What a great video. He actually produced two videos for us. You can find them in full in our YouTube page or elsewhere on our rebelnews.com page. But Ryan joins us now via Skype. Ryan, great to see you. Thanks very much for going on this special mission for us. No problem. I had a lot of fun doing it. It was, a, it was an adventure. Well, I really liked your style. You were really informal and calm. And even when the cops came, you didn't lose your cool. You were firm enough. Uh, you weren't rude, but you weren't submissive. You didn't run away right away. You said, hey, I have the right to be here. Um, those cops were on the American side, right? That's right. Yeah, they came right up the same way that I came up, like up Roxham Road. It was pretty cinematic when they when I saw them pulling up. There was like a dust trail behind them, and it's like this clearly, you know, a police vehicle coming towards me. I was like, I find, I'm being contacted because it was there was nobody there to even try to talk to before besides the duck calls that I got from the guys in that building. So, so what pretty probably stunned happened, I'm that. guessing here, is that you were spotted by the Canadians just across the border in that white hut there. And right. they called for their American counterparts to come up and talk to you. I'm guessing that's what's happened because yeah. those Americans wouldn't have spotted you, right? No, no, there was no way. I didn't even see anybody like leading up to, I saw a couple of horses and stuff, but I don't even think there's any of the residents that would have, you know, called them. Uh, it had to have been them. Yeah. It had to have been the Canadian guys in that little building. Now, I'd seen... Uh, the images you showed us before, the no entry sign and uh, please don't come here sign, but also the contradictory message of the welcome hut where everyone gets processed. Can you confirm that there was no signage at all referring to the virus or quarantine? And I think we just saw there, there was no extra fencing whatsoever. There was nothing new there, visually speaking. No, no, there was nothing. I mean, I, I was looking around for something like even like a little piece of paper that's taped up and to see how extensive it is to, to get people notified about this whole thing. You can go to a Burger King or a CVS or whatever. It doesn't matter how, you know, like how small any business is, a local liquor store that I visited later on that day. They had tape on the floor where you're supposed to stand and everywhere has like some sort of notice, but not the border between the United States and Canada. So yeah, it was pretty odd to not see that, to get away from it all, and that being the place to do it. When I called you up about a week ago, uh, it was clear to me that you, like every other American, had never heard that 50,000 people had claimed to be refugees from America going into Canada. I mean, it's a laughable thing that I'm a refugee from Andrew Cuomo's New York. There's no such thing. But we're suckers up here to say, oh, sure, come on in. And 
I mean, it's been a real irritant for Canadians. You're an American, obviously. What do you think of the fact that 50,000 people have claimed to be refugees from New York walking into Canada? Well, that's a little hurtful. I mean, if <laughs> I didn't know America produced people that are under such duress that they would be, they would want to leave. And that's, that's terrible because we used to be that shining light on the hill. And now, you know, now we're creating such traumatic experiences for people that have sought refuge here that they have to keep, they have to keep seeking refuge, refuge. Well, terrible. That one and, cop uh, said to a, you that uh, and I don't know if he was speaking hypothetically, like hypothetically, someone could that somebody could kill you. somebody. And I mean, mm. it, it was a little ambiguous. Maybe he was just giving you a for instance, or maybe someone had actually done that. I don't know if we how we would even know. Well, I talked to that resident in my follow up video the day afterwards, and the resident that I spoke to said that there was someone who had left a car there. And then just went across. There's been a car that's been abandoned there. He, he mentioned that, you know. So who knows what, I mean, if you're willing to leave a car that could be worth thousands of dollars just to flee America, you're pl probably not be there, fleeing so. something serious. Might not be their car that they're leaving. Oh, good you know? point. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, it's a very strange thing. And, um, you know, I know a lot of Americans chuckled when Donald Trump suggested four years ago, I think almost, that some illegals would self-deport. I mean, who on earth would voluntarily leave the United States to some other country if they weren't forced out? I guess 50,000 Americans did self-deport if they saw that as the lesser hassle. Maybe they saw Canada as the bigger sucker or richer welfare, mm. or that we wouldn't deport them because they've already been ordered deported from America, or maybe they've got some, they're wanted for some criminal offense in America and Canada didn't know about it. Like it's, it's sort of funny that 50,000 of the worst of the worst have indeed voluntarily left America without border agents having to kick them out. Yeah. And you know, it, it's kind of like, like you said, doing ICE's job for them, but is there a circumstance it just got me thinking that if you needed some health care, that you go to Canada, you get this warm welcome, and then you get some health care. And then what is it like to sneak back in from from Canada to America? Is that possible? It, it's for health care and just a temporary visit to Canada. That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a monologue on the news of the day, then I interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. You gotta subscribe. Go to rebelnews.com.